Ever since I became the keeper of the old Harrow Point Lighthouse, my life has been a solitary one, punctuated by the rhythmic sweep of the lighthouse beam and the relentless crashing of waves against the cliffside. My days were marked by routine, maintain the light, keep the logs, and watch over the tempestuous sea. But that monotony shattered one foggy evening. A dense, ghostly mist had rolled in from the ocean, blanketing everything in a suffocating, eerie silence. I was accustomed to fog, but this was different. It was thicker, almost alive, as if it concealed secrets in its opaque embrace. As night deepened, the radio, usually crackling with the distant voices of ships, fell disturbingly silent. It was as if the fog had swallowed all sound, all life. That's when I saw it, a faint, pulsating light out at sea, moving erratically, unlike any ship I knew. My attempts to hail it went unanswered. Feeling a sense of unease, I grabbed my coat and flashlight, venturing out into the fog. The beam of my light seemed to be devoured by the mist, barely illuminating the path ahead. The closer I got to the shoreline, the more I felt a chilling sensation, the feeling of being watched by unseen eyes. The pulsating light continued to move, now closer to the shore. It was then I heard it, a faint, guttural sound, like a whispered growl just on the edge of hearing. It seemed to surround me, coming from the fog itself. I reached the rocky shore, my gaze fixed on the strange light. It bobbed in the water, a beacon of the unknown. My heart raced as I contemplated returning to the safety of the lighthouse, when suddenly the light surged forward, revealing its source. It was a small boat, old and battered, its surface covered in strange markings that glowed faintly in the fog. But it was what lay within the boat that made my blood run cold. A figure shrouded in a tattered cloak, face obscured by the hood. As I stood frozen, the figure raised its head, revealing eyes that burned like embers in the fog. It spoke in a voice that was both a hiss and a whisper, words that I couldn't comprehend, but that filled me with an inexplicable dread. Gathering my courage, I called out asking who they were, what they wanted. The figure pointed towards the lighthouse, then to the sea, uttering a phrase that sent shivers down my spine. Beware the depths. Before I could react, the boat and its mysterious occupant faded back into the fog, leaving me alone on the shore, my mind reeling with questions. What did the warning mean? Who was that figure? And why had they come to Old Harrow Point? I returned to the lighthouse, unsettled and vigilant. That night, I barely slept, my dreams haunted by visions of churning, shadowy depths and eyes glowing in the dark. As dawn broke, dispelling the fog, I knew that my life as a lighthouse keeper had irrevocably changed. Something was lurking in the depths, a mystery that was now mine to unravel and I couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning. In the days following the mysterious arrival, the old Harrow Point lighthouse felt different, as if the fog had left an unseen mark on it. The radio remained silent, a haunting void where there should have been life. The sea, once a source of solace, now seemed like a vast hidden abyss, holding secrets I was yet to uncover. Disturbing discoveries. My routine was disrupted by a sense of foreboding. During my daily maintenance rounds, I noticed peculiarities, strange markings etched into the rocks near the shore, similar to those on the boat. I found myself gazing out at the sea, half expecting to see the boat emerge from the mist again. The most unsettling discovery, however, came one morning at low tide. Washed up on the rocky beach was an ancient looking artifact a locket, its surface adorned with symbols that matched the boat's markings. Inside the locket was an old photograph, worn by time, showing a figure standing in front of the lighthouse, their features eerily similar to the cloaked figure from the boat. The lighthouse's past. Compelled to understand more, I delved into the lighthouse's archives, a collection of logs and records dating back decades. Buried within these documents, 
I found mention of a lighthouse keeper from a century ago whose descriptions of strange occurrences eerily mirrored my own experiences. He wrote of lights in the fog, whispers in the wind, and a deep, unexplainable dread. A night of haunting. As night fell, the lighthouse took on a spectral quality. The beam of light cutting through the darkness seemed weaker, as if struggling against an unseen force. That night, the whispers returned, more coherent than before, swirling around me like a cold, suffocating mist. In the whispers, I discerned a warning, a prophecy of sorts. The depths shall rise, and the light shall fall. The words echoed in my mind, a riddle that hinted at a looming threat, a danger that was linked to the sea and the lighthouse itself. The keeper's resolve, fear and curiosity waged a war within me. I knew I couldn't ignore these events. I had to face whatever was unfolding. I was the lighthouse keeper, the guardian of this place, and it was my duty to uncover the truth. No matter how deep I had to delve into the lighthouse's haunted past, as the first light of dawn broke the horizon, a determination settled within me. I would not let the shadows and whispers intimidate me. I would stand against whatever was lurking in the depths, protect the lighthouse, and solve the mystery that had been thrust upon me. The old Harrow Point lighthouse had become more than a beacon in the night. It was now the epicenter of a dark and ancient tale, one that I was inexorably a part of. Days melded into nights as I delved deeper into the mysteries surrounding the old Harrow Point lighthouse. The once comforting rhythm of the sea now felt like a harbinger of unseen terrors. My sleep was plagued by nightmares of churning waters, whispering voices, and the cloaked figure, its ember-like eyes burning in the darkness. Unearthed Memories In my quest for answers, I stumbled upon an old, dust-covered journal in the lighthouse's attic. It belonged to the keeper from a century ago, the one whose experiences mirrored my own. As I leafed through the yellowed pages, a narrative of terror and obsession unfolded. He spoke of a curse from the depths, a malevolent force tied to the lighthouse, brought forth by an ancient maritime ritual gone awry. His entries became increasingly erratic, filled with sketches of the strange symbols and frantic notes about a rising darkness from the sea. It was clear that whatever he had faced had driven him to the brink of madness. A sinister pattern. The more I read, the more I saw a pattern emerging. Each occurrence of strange phenomena at the lighthouse was preceded by an unusual alignment of the stars, a celestial event that seemed to awaken something in the depths of the ocean. I cross, referenced this with my records, and realized with a sinking heart that another such alignment was due in just a few days. The Lighthouse's Warning That night, as I tended to the lighthouse, the beam flickered ominously, casting erratic shadows across the rocks. The air grew colder, and I heard it again. The whispers clearer now, speaking in a language I couldn't understand, but felt ominously familiar. The sea churned violently, as if in response to the lighthouse's faltering light. In a moment of impulse, I grabbed the old journal and the locket and made my way to the cliff overlooking the sea. There, I held the locket up to the lighthouse beam, and to my astonishment, the symbols began to glow, casting a strange light that cut through the fog like a blade. The unseen revealed. As the light hit the water, a vision unfolded before me. I saw shadows moving beneath the waves, an ancient, sunken city, and dark figures circling a monolith that pulsed with the same symbols as the locket and the boat. The vision was overwhelming, a glimpse into a world that should have remained hidden. I realized then that the lighthouse was not just a beacon. It was a barrier, a seal keeping the malevolent force at bay, the cloaked figure, the lighthouse keeper from the past. The ritual, they were all connected, pieces of a puzzle that spanned centuries. A keeper's burden. As the vision faded, a sense of dread settled over me. I knew what I had to do. The upcoming celestial alignment would bring forth the darkness from the depths, 
and I had to strengthen the lighthouse's light, reinforce the barrier before it was too late. I returned to the lighthouse, resolute yet fearful. The task ahead was daunting, to confront the ancient evil that lurked beneath the waves and to ensure the lighthouse remained a bastion against the darkness. The whispers in the wind seemed to mock my resolve, but I steeled myself. I was the lighthouse keeper, the guardian of old Harrow Point, and I would face whatever came from the depths, armed with the knowledge of the past and the light of the present. As the stars began to align, I prepared for the night that would decide the fate of the lighthouse, and perhaps the world beyond. As the critical night approached, the very air around the old Harrow Point lighthouse seemed charged with anticipation. The sea churned more violently than I had ever seen, as if agitated by an unseen force. The whispers that once were faint now resonated like a chorus of the damned, carried on the wind that howled around the lighthouse. The Preparation I spent the day fortifying the lighthouse, ensuring that every component was functioning at its peak. The old journal had become my guide, its cryptic warnings and instructions my only hope in strengthening the barrier against the impending darkness. I repositioned the mirrors, cleaned the lens, and adjusted the light to its maximum intensity. The lighthouse had to be more than a beacon tonight. It had to be a shield. As night fell, a palpable sense of dread enveloped me. The celestial alignment was upon us. The stars and planets moving into a configuration that hadn't occurred for a century. The darkness from the depths was stirring, eager to breach the barrier that the lighthouse upheld. I took my position in the lantern room. The journal opened before me. The symbols from the locket glowed faintly in the lighthouse's light, a silent ally in the coming battle. It began with the sea. Massive waves crashed against the cliffs with unnatural force, each impact a blow against the lighthouse's foundations. Then came the fog, thicker and more oppressive than ever, swirling around the lighthouse like a living entity. In the heart of the fog, I saw them, shadowy figures, their forms indistinct and fluid, moving towards the lighthouse with purpose. They were the denizens of the deep, the dark spirits bound to the sunken city, called forth by the alignment. With every passing moment, the lighthouse beam struggled against the encroaching darkness. The whispers grew louder, now clearly voices chanting in an ancient, forgotten tongue. They were trying to extinguish the light, to break the barrier. I chanted the counter, spells from the journal, my voice firm despite the fear that gripped me. The symbols from the locket and the journal began to resonate, creating a protective aura around the lighthouse. In the midst of the chaos, a figure emerged from the fog, the cloaked figure from the boat. Their presence, once ominous, now felt like a beacon of hope. They joined their voice with mine, chanting the ancient spells that reinforced the lighthouse's power. The combined strength of our chants and the lighthouse's light began to push the shadows back, the figures in the fog writhing as if in pain. As the celestial alignment reached its peak, a blinding flash of light erupted from the lighthouse, piercing the fog and the darkness. The sea calmed, the wind died down, and the figures in the fog dissipated like smoke in the wind. The lighthouse had held. The barrier was restored stronger than before. The deep had been pushed back into the abyss, its denizens sealed once again in their sunken prison. As dawn broke, the figure in the cloak approached me. In the light of the new day, their features were visible, a weathered face marked by time, but with a sense of peace that spoke of a long battle finally won. They were the last guardian of the lighthouse, the keeper who had faced the darkness a century ago and had been waiting for this moment to pass on the mantle. With a nod of understanding, they handed me a key, the key to a hidden chamber in the lighthouse where the true history of Old Harrow Point was kept, a legacy of guardianship against the darkness. As the figure vanished into the morning light, I knew my life would never be the same. I was no longer just a lighthouse keeper. I was a guardian of the light, 
a sentinel against the darkness that lurked in the depths of the sea. The old Harrow Point lighthouse stood tall, its light a constant reminder of the night I had faced the abyss and emerged victorious. In the aftermath of that fateful night, the old Harrow Point lighthouse stood not just as a beacon for lost ships, but as a bulwark against the darkness that lurked beneath the waves. I, once a mere keeper of the light, had now become its guardian, a role passed down through generations, unbeknownst to the outside world. With the key given to me by the previous guardian, I discovered a hidden chamber beneath the lighthouse. It was a repository of knowledge filled with ancient tomes, maps of celestial alignments, and artifacts from the sunken city. These were the tools and secrets of the guardians, passed down through time. As I delved into these archives, I learned the true history of Old Harrow Point. The lighthouse was not just a navigational aid. It was a seal built atop a nexus of mystical energies, a point where our world touched the abyssal depths. The guardians were sworn to maintain this seal to prevent the darkness from seeping into our world. Among the relics, I found references to the locket I had discovered on the shore. It belonged to the first guardian, a mariner who had encountered the denizens of the deep and had dedicated his life to containing them. The locket was a talisman, imbued with the power to reveal the unseen and to protect its bearer from the malevolent forces. Realizing the weight of my new role, I began training in the arcane arts detailed in the chamber's tomes. I learned to decipher the celestial patterns that heralded the rising of the depths, to chant the spells that strengthened the lighthouse's barrier, and to use the artifacts to scry into the unknown. The lighthouse had become more than my home. It was my sanctum, a place of learning and preparation. I practiced daily, honing my skills, aware that the peace we were experiencing was but a reprieve. Despite the calm, I couldn't shake off the feeling that the abyss was watching, waiting for a moment of weakness. Some nights, I would stand on the cliff, gazing into the sea and hear the faint calls from the depths, a siren song that beckoned me to look beyond the horizon. One night, during a particularly intense meditative scrying, I saw a vision of the sunken city. It was alive, pulsating with a dark energy, and in its center stood the monolith, its symbols glowing ominously. I knew then that the battle I had fought was just the beginning. The abyss was patient, and it hungered. As days turned into weeks, I felt the weight of my duty more acutely. The solitude of the lighthouse was no longer just physical. It was a seclusion of purpose. I was the keeper of secrets that could not be shared. A sentinel against a threat, the world remained blissfully unaware of. I continued my studies and preparations. Fortified by the knowledge that I was part of an ancient lineage of guardians, the lighthouse was my charge, and I was determined to uphold the legacy left to me. Yet in my heart I knew that the true test still lay ahead. The whispering woods that surrounded the lighthouse seemed to murmur with foreboding, a reminder that the boundary between our world and the depths was ever fragile. One evening, as I walked through the woods, the whispers grew louder, forming coherent words. The cycle continues, they said. The depths shall rise again. It was a prophecy, or perhaps a warning, that my battle with the abyss was far from over. I returned to the lighthouse, resolute, I was the guardian of Old Harrow Point, a light against the darkness, and I would face whatever came from the depths with courage and resolve. The lighthouse was more than a structure of stone and light. It was a symbol of hope, a beacon in the night against the unending darkness of the sea. In the ensuing weeks at Old Harrow Point Lighthouse, the sense of impending doom grew more palpable. The sea, once a symbol of boundless freedom, now felt like a malevolent entity, biding its time. The whispers from the woods had become more frequent, their messages cryptic yet ominous, speaking of a cycle that was nearing its completion. My routine inspection of the shoreline revealed something unsettling. An array of strange markings had appeared on the beach overnight, etched deeply into the sand. 
They mirrored the symbols from the sunken city, forming a pattern that pointed towards the lighthouse. It was as if the sea itself was sending a message, a harbinger of what was to come. Reports began to trickle in over the radio, tales of ships disappearing near the vicinity of the lighthouse. At first, I dismissed them as mere coincidences, but as the number grew, a chilling pattern emerged. Each disappearance occurred under the cloak of fog, and their last known coordinates always aligned with the lighthouse. I scoured the ancient tomes for answers, and a grim realization dawned upon me. The lighthouse wasn't just a seal. It was a beacon, attracting not just ships, but something far more sinister from the depths. One evening, as I scanned the horizon, I noticed a storm brewing, unlike any I had seen before. Dark, swirling clouds converged above the sea, their centers illuminated intermittently by flashes of eerie green lightning. The air was charged with electricity, making the hairs on my arms stand on end. As night fell, the storm intensified, and with it came an unsettling calm in the sea below. The waves ceased their relentless crashing against the shore, replaced by an eerie stillness that seemed to hold its breath. It was then that I saw it. The creature circled the lighthouse, each movement causing the ground beneath my feet to tremble. I felt an inexplicable connection to it, as if it were a manifestation of the lighthouse's dark legacy. With the Leviathan's arrival, I knew I had to act quickly. I rushed to the hidden chamber, gathering all the talismans and artifacts I could carry. Among them was an ancient horn said to have the power to control the creatures of the deep. As I made my way back to the top of the lighthouse, the creature let out a deafening roar that shook the very foundation of the lighthouse. I could see its massive form coiling around the structure. Its intent clear, it was here to destroy the barrier once and for all. Standing at the edge of the lantern room, I raised the horn to my lips and blew. The sound that emanated was otherworldly resonating with the power of the ancient guardians. The creature recoiled, its roar turning into a pained howl. The battle that ensued was like nothing I had ever witnessed. With each blast of the horn, the Leviathan writhed and thrashed, its attacks growing more frenzied. The lighthouse trembled under the onslaught, but I held my ground, determined to protect the seal at all costs. In the midst of the chaos, the sky above the lighthouse began to open, revealing a glimpse of the celestial alignment that had set these events in motion. I knew then that this was my only chance. I poured all my energy into one final, ear-shattering blast of the horn. The Leviathan let out a final, agonized cry before retreating back into the depths, the sea closing over it like a closing wound. The storm dissipated as quickly as it had formed leaving behind a serene sky dotted with stars. Exhausted, I collapsed to the floor, the horn slipping from my grasp. As I lay there, panting, I realized the true extent of my role as the guardian. The lighthouse was not just a beacon for lost ships. It was a beacon for the ancient powers of the deep, a reminder of the fragile balance between our world and the unseen realms below. I knew then that my battle was far from over. The cycle the whispers spoke of was not yet complete, and as long as the lighthouse stood, I would have to be its vigilant protector, a guardian against the shadows that lurked beneath the tides. In the wake of the Leviathan's assault, the old Harrow Point lighthouse stood resolute, its light piercing the darkness as a symbol of my unyielding stand against the tides. The aftermath of the battle left me both physically and mentally exhausted, yet imbued with a newfound understanding of my role as the lighthouse's guardian. The whispers from the depths had ceased, but the silence they left behind was heavy with unspoken threats. Compelled to seek deeper knowledge about the lighthouse's legacy and the forces I was battling, I returned to the hidden chamber. There, amidst the dusty tomes and ancient artifacts, I uncovered a truth that chilled me to the bone. The lighthouse was built upon a site sacred to the creatures of the deep, a focal point of mystical energies that both attracted and repelled them. The guardians before me had not only kept the light burning, 
they had been custodians of a fragile truce, a balance between the surface and the abyss. Each guardian had added their knowledge and experience to the chamber, creating a lineage of wisdom and power that I now inherited. Despite the relative calm, an unease gripped me. I could feel a shift in the air, a subtle change that signaled a new phase in the cycle. It began with a whisper, soft as a sigh, drifting up from the depths. The whispers grew in number and intensity, forming a cacophony of voices that filled my nights with dread. The voices spoke of the abyss's hunger, its desire to reclaim the sacred site, and its intention to shatter the barrier once and for all. They spoke of a coming convergence, a celestial event that would weaken the barrier and allow the abyss to unleash its fury upon the world. Knowing that the celestial convergence would bring a surge of power to the forces beneath the waves, I began preparing for the impending conflict. I fortified the lighthouse's defenses, inscribing protective runes and setting up wards around the perimeter. I also delved deeper into the practice of the arcane arts mastering spells and incantations that could repel the dark creatures. The lighthouse was not just a physical barrier. It was a beacon of mystical energy that needed to be reinforced. As the convergence drew nearer, strange phenomena began to occur around the lighthouse. The sea took on an unnatural hue, glowing with an eerie bioluminescence at night. Fish and other sea creatures washed up on the shore their bodies marked with the same symbols that adorned the lighthouse and the locket. One night, as I gazed out at the sea, I witnessed a horrifying sight, shadowy figures emerging from the waves, their forms fluid and menacing. They moved towards the lighthouse with deliberate intent, their presence in affront to the barrier I was sworn to protect. On the night of the convergence, the air was electric with tension. The stars aligned in a pattern that hadn't been seen for centuries, and the sea roiled as if in anticipation. I stood in the lantern room, the ancient horn in my hands, ready to face whatever emerged from the abyss. As the celestial event reached its apex, a massive wave surged towards the lighthouse, carrying with it a horde of nightmarish creatures. They clawed at the barrier, their shrieks and howls a symphony of malice. With every blast of the horn, I repelled their advances, but their numbers seemed endless. I chanted the spells from the ancient tomes, each word imbued with the power of my predecessors, strengthening the barrier against the onslaught. Throughout the night, I battled the tide of darkness, a lone sentinel against the might of the abyss. The creatures were relentless, but I stood firm, fueled by a sense of duty that transcended fear as dawn broke, the creatures retreated into the depths, defeated, but not destroyed. The lighthouse had held, its light a testament to the guardians who had stood watch over the centuries. I knew then that my battle was far from over. The cycle would continue, the abyss would hunger again, but I would be ready. I was the guardian of old Harrow Point, a keeper of the light that held back the darkness and I would fulfill my duty until the end of my days. The lighthouse stood as a beacon of hope, a symbol of the eternal struggle between light and dark, and I was its protector, a guardian against the echoes of the abyss. As the guardian of old Harrow Point Lighthouse, I had grown accustomed to the unending battle against the darkness that lay beneath the waves. Each day was a testament to the will to keep the ancient evil at bay, and each night was a vigil against the sinister forces that threatened to engulf the world in shadows. Time passed, and with it, the lighthouse's strength seemed to ebb. Despite my relentless efforts to maintain the barrier, I could sense a weakening in the mystical energies that bound the abyss. The sea grew more turbulent, its waves crashing against the shore with a ferocity that spoke of anger and hunger. The whispers from the deep had become a constant presence. Their voices a blend of taunts and foreboding prophecies. They spoke of the lighthouse's light dimming, of the guardian's resolve faltering, and of the abyss's imminent rise. One stormy night, as I patrolled the perimeter of the lighthouse, 
a figure emerged from the shadows. It was a woman, her eyes reflecting the tumultuous sea, her presence both calming and disconcerting. She introduced herself as Eleanor, a descendant of the mariner who had first bound the abyss. Eleanor spoke of a lineage parallel to mine, of guardians who had kept watch over the abyss from afar, ensuring that the balance was maintained. She had come to Old Harrow Point to warn me of an impending rupture in the barrier, a break that could spell disaster for both our worlds. The signs were all there. The dying flora around the lighthouse, the disturbed wildlife, and the increasingly violent weather. The barrier that had stood for centuries was on the brink of collapse, and with it, the only thing that kept the abyssal horrors at bay. Eleanor spoke of a ritual, long forgotten, that could reinforce the barrier. It required both our strengths, the guardian of the light and the keeper of the abyssal watch. It was a perilous endeavor, one that held the risk of drawing the abyss's attention directly to us. We prepared for the ritual under the cloak of night, as the celestial bodies aligned in a rare configuration that would amplify our efforts. The lighthouse's light served as the focal point, its beam piercing the darkness as we chanted the ancient incantations. The air around us crackled with energy, the sea roared in response, and the ground trembled beneath our feet. The ritual was a battle in itself, a struggle to weave the energies into a barrier strong enough to withstand the abyss's wrath. As the ritual reached its climax, a deafening roar echoed from the depths, and a surge of dark energy erupted from the sea. The abyss had awakened, its denizens aware of our attempt to seal it away once more. Shadowy tendrils emerged from the water, reaching towards the lighthouse with a malevolent intent. Eleanor and I poured our energies into the ritual, our voices merging in a chant that resonated with the power of generations of guardians. In that moment of desperation, I realized what needed to be done. The barrier required a guardian's essence to be truly fortified. With a heavy heart, I made my decision. I would become part of the barrier, my spirit a permanent bastion against the darkness. As I channeled my essence into the light, I felt my physical form dissolve, my consciousness merging with the lighthouse's beam. Eleanor's voice was the last thing I heard a solemn chant that sealed the ritual. From my new existence as part of the barrier, I watched as the abyss's forces recoiled, their attack thwarted by the renewed strength of the light. Eleanor stood alone now, the new guardian of Old Harrow Point, the keeper of the balance between the light and the dark. The lighthouse stood taller that night, its light a beacon of hope and a testament to the sacrifices made to keep the darkness at bay. I was no longer a physical guardian, but my spirit would forever watch over the seas, a sentinel against the shadows that lurked in the depths. Old Harrow Point Lighthouse, a symbol of enduring vigilance, continued its watch, its light a constant reminder of the thin veil that separates our world from the abyss. In the ethereal existence that had become my reality, I, the former guardian, now watched over Old Harrow Point Lighthouse as a spectral sentinel. The lighthouse, standing tall against the relentless sea, continued to be a bulwark between the known world and the abyssal depths. Eleanor, now the sole guardian of the lighthouse, upheld the legacy with a resolve that mirrored my own. She maintained the rituals and wards with a proficiency that spoke of her lineage, her connection to the abyssal watchers, under her watch, the lighthouse's light shone brighter, a symbol of unwavering defiance against the darkness below. The whispers from the abyss, once a chorus of menacing taunts, had become hushed, as if in recognition of the lighthouse's renewed strength. But they never ceased entirely, a constant reminder of the ever, present threat that lay in wait beneath the waves. Eleanor often stood at the cliff's edge, her gaze piercing through the sea's tumultuous surface, as if seeking to understand the mysteries it concealed. She had become attuned to the delicate balance that governed our coexistence with the abyss, aware that peace was but a temporary reprieve. The lighthouse, through its cycles of guardians, had amassed a history rich with battles, 
sacrifices, and secrets. It stood not just as a beacon for lost sailors, but as a testament to the human spirit's resilience against the unknown. Visitors, drawn by tales of the lighthouse's storied past, often left with a sense of awe, touched by the lingering presence of its guardians. The lighthouse had become a legend, a story passed down through generations, inspiring both fear and fascination. From my vantage point beyond the physical realm, I watched as the seasons changed, as storms battered the shore, and as calm seas reflected the moonlit sky. The lighthouse, through it all, remained constant. It's light a guide through the darkest nights and the roughest tides. Eleanor, with each passing day, grew more adept at her role, her connection to the lighthouse deepening. She was more than its keeper. She was its companion, its confidant, a guardian of the light and the darkness it held at bay. As time marched on, I understood that the lighthouse's story was one of eternal cycles. Guardians would come and go, each leaving their mark, each contributing to the legacy. The abyss, with its insatiable hunger, would always be there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for a moment of weakness. But the lighthouse would stand tall, its light a beacon of hope, a symbol of mankind's unyielding stand against the forces that sought to engulf the world in shadows. The cycle of guardianship would continue, each guardian a link in an unbreakable chain that stretched through time. In the quiet moments of twilight, when the sky turned shades of crimson and gold, the lighthouse seemed to whisper a silent promise, a vow to keep watch, to be the eternal sentinel against the darkness. Old Harrow Point Lighthouse, with its storied past and its guardian's unwavering watch, would forever be a beacon of light, a symbol of the eternal struggle between light and dark. And I, now part of its essence, would forever be its watchful eye, gazing out into the sea, a guardian not of flesh and blood, but of spirit and light. Thanks for listening. If you like the story, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to your comments. See you in the next video.